Well, one other big issue. One other big issue this week mm. was the expansion of Heathrow, and yes. you were very scathing about Boris Johnson. You should mm -hmm. he, he should resign as foreign secretary mm -hmm. um, because he obviously opposed vehemently this expansion and then disappeared when the crucial vote came. Do, do you still stand by the fact he should resign? Well, I do think there are a whole host of reasons. I think that Boris Johnson has been in his post too long. That's a separate issue. But I think if you're going to start talking about lying in front of bulldozers, you know, maybe he could have arrived at the vote in a bulldozer. But it's it, that is a separate issue. What I would say at the moment is focusing today on what we do about making sure we've got the best possible health service and the best possible social care. We can't then go back to was people Boris Johnson, a few years down the line was and Boris say, Johnson sorry, treating... we were wrong, we need to right, actually Was pay Boris, you. You was Boris also talking tosh and treating the public like fools? Um, I, I always felt that that figure on the side of the bus mm. was not true. I had people quite senior in the campaign at the time saying to me, we know it's not true, it's just we need to keep focusing on a big number and that's what people but will that's remember. Now, with, and that, that, is, is, that is true. So right, right I get from it, but the this outgo, is now the, this is now the was, Prime Minister... The yes. health secretary and the foreign secretary, all three of them, you think, are talking complete tosh and treating the public like fools. Do you still feel I mean, comfortable point, being conservative? At what point are you, if, are you not if, actually going to say, I'm out of here? I mean, if seriously, if down the line, your words, not mine. Find, if we find down the line there's a Brexit dividend, I'll be very happy to take it back. But I don't think that and many serious commentators think that it's certainly in the short term no, there's any chance I, of a Brexit listen, dividend. I couldn't, I couldn't so agree with I you think more. It's My only question, I couldn't agree with you more, but I'm not an MP, a Conservative yeah. MP. You are. And my yes. only question is, how many more members of the Cabinet, from the Prime Minister down, <laughs> would you have to deduce a talking tosh and treating the public like fools before you think, I'm out of this shower? Well, I think the point is that there's a dispute in both main political parties and, and what I see that we have is in, essentially as almost like an internal coalition within both main parties because there is a difference of view on this. People feel passionately about it as they do out there in the country and sometimes it is necessary I think to, to hear those voices from parties and, and what I try and do in, in my party is try and bring people back to the centre ground because I think that's where most of the British public are um, and I don't want to see my party drifting off to the right uh, and I know very many colleagues in the Labour Party also feel the same, that there's a there's a case for having voices to say, let's come back to the centre ground and, and look at look at this. Okay. Um, that's I wonder, my view. I, I wonder just for, for you personally, mm. whether you feel that somebody like you who's who's against Brexit but wants higher taxes, whether you feel there is a party at the moment where you'd feel more well, comfortable. Can I just say I'm I'm not I understand that the people British people have voted for Brexit and we've now passed the, the legislation, uh, the EU Withdrawal Act as it is now. Well, Britain is leaving the EU. I've completely accepted that. But I think there's a very legitimate argument about how we leave uh, and what the terms are about our trading relationships as we move forward. And, and that's what the argument's about now. We're, we're not rerunning the referendum campaign here. Um, that's been okay. decided. It's about how we leave. And that's a really important discussion. And, uh, and I think it is a shame that sometimes there's a, an assumption that anybody who voted Remain somehow can't have any say in what happens next. I think that we do need to hear everyone's voices. I think, I think, I think the bigger concern for me mm. is that you mm. think that most of the Cabinet, including the Prime Minister, are a bunch of fools talking tosh. <laughs> no, uh, I, I think, think that... that, to be honest, I think we can all uh, use a term on, on Twitter, but I do, I do stand by the fact that I do think it's tosh mm. to assume that there is a Brexit dividend no, coming down that. the line that can pay for the all the right NHS. Now, are there any members of the, of the Conservative Cabinet right now who are not talking tosh and treating the public like fools? Can you name well, one? I think, yes, absolutely. I think the Chancellor is being very measured in how he talks about this, as is Greg Clark. Um, and I think that very many ministers within the government also feel that, that we need to be upfront with people okay. about how we're going to pay for this. And that's what that's about. Trying to have a, and also to have discussions across political parties so we don't keep ending up back with political failure as we've done for years with some people saying it's a dementia tax, other than saying it's a, it's a death tax. And we never get anywhere because politicians can't agree. So we need to actually have a really sensible discussion upfront about how we're going to pay for this and how we're going to do it fairly. That's I the think key the thing. The sooner here. we get people running in the country who are not treating the public like fools and talking tosh, <laughs> the better, Dr Wollaston. Couldn't Thank agree you. more. Thank you very much indeed. It would also be quite nice to have uh, a cabinet which agreed on anything, to be honest. Isn't it extraordinary that a Conservative MP basically just thinks the Prime Minister, the Foreign Secretary, the House, all talking tosh, all treating the public like fools? I mean, these people are running the country.
They are literally running the country. And yet, apparently, there are a bunch of fools talking tosh and treating us like fools. I find that just extraordinary. But that's not a Labour MP. It was a Conservative MP. I know. But the split is right down each party now. She probably has much more in common with people on the Labour benches than she does with people just, on her own I, benches. I just don't think... I mean, she, she changed her mind on Brexit the week before the referendum, right? Wasn't it? Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Literally, like and it was because of the NHS... Yeah. It was because of the NHS pledge, which we anyway, didn't believe. I don't think anyone... The one which Nigel Farage said wasn't going to happen the morning of the referendum result. The one thing, the only thing that is consistent is the weather, which is consistently inconsistent. <laughs> Laura?